Good morning, good morning, good morning. Buenos dias, mi gente. Yo, yo, welcome to Daily Discipline number 572, primarily in a row. My name's Ron Hoback. Happy that you're here. I'm honored and humbled that you keep coming back like for reals. Hey, it's Monday. That means it's a Mamba Monday, which is our weekly reminder to fall in love with the work. Don't worry about the results. Again, simple to say, hard to do, right? But we just have to fall in love with the work, right? That's the Mamba mentality, and it's a Mamba Monday. It's hard to get started for a lot of people on Monday, especially when it's raining and cold out. Uh, nonetheless, it's a work day. It's a work day for me. It's a work day for you. Let's do it. First things first, still the realist. I'm also balanced. Yeah. Yeah, this is a result of me watching uh, The Last Dance last night and spent all weekend working in my yard. There are plenty of things work-related I could have done. And I'm like, you know what? I did my work, right? Now I need to work on my house, right? This makes me feel good. gives me balance. You know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All right. So moving on to real talk along the same vein. Do you really want to be like Mike? Again, uh, I'm watching The Last Dance right now, 10 part docuseries on ESPN where they're, they're, it's a docuseries on the Chicago Bulls of Michael Jordan. It starts with when they really in warning when they started winning, right? And Michael Jordan was there for several years and had gone through two coaches before they started winning. Also, didn't win anything without Scottie Pippen. Uh, never won a championship without uh, Phil Jackson. So um, my point is this: that I, I and I and I've said this all along. Whenever somebody's wanted to have the the debate about LeBron versus Michael, an individual competitor, I give it to you. Michael Jordan just ruthless, right? And Kobe wanted to be just like Mike. He really did, right? But the problem is with both of them. You know, that you're like that. And then a lot of people don't want to work with you because not everybody has that fire. And while we admire it from a distance, we're like, oh, man, that Michael Jordan, he's a killer. You need people like that on your team, blah, blah, blah. Have you ever worked with somebody like that? Because if you have, you're like, oh, my God, that person's out of control, right? And when you stop and think about what it is that they're chasing, it's selfish, right? It's not that... You know, Michael Jordan wasn't doing this and saying, oh, the city shot. Like, he was proving to everybody that he was the greatest basketball player ever. And again, he did it. He did it. But LeBron, this is my opinion, Rob Hoback, on my YouTube channel, I believe that LeBron has a more encompassing view of the world. And because of the way he was raised versus the way Michael Jordan was raised, um, he looks a bigger picture than just himself and his immediate family. Nothing wrong with that. Just my personal preference. And so, no, I don't really want to be like Mike. I want to be more like LeBron. Just say it, right? Um, yeah, so moving on to my thank yous. Um, you know, God is good. God's been good to us in the good times and the bad, right? And I was thinking about, you know, God's influence. Uh, yeah, let me tell you God's story yesterday. So yesterday's Mother's Day. My mom's in a uh, long-term home, so uh, we can't go see her, right? And so... Uh, <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but she tried to convince one of my sisters to meet her at the back door to give her some stuff so she could see her. My sister's like, no, no, no. Well, my other sister was driving by to drop something off for my mom and saw my mom outside walking her dog, so she got to talk to her. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a God moment, right? What are the chances? So anyway, God's been good to us in the good times and the bad. I'm certain when we get on the other side, I can already see it. I see how God's working in my life. I see how he's working in other people's lives. God is good. Um... What did I write there? I don't even know what that word says, but I know what the next one, examples. So, you know, we're often given examples both of how to act and how not to act. And, uh, you know, there are yeah, there are a lot of things about Michael Jordan and his career, you know, his entire life that you look at. Like, those are the things that I want to try to emulate. And those are the things that I don't want to be part of. One of them is being out of balance. Um, madres. You're thankful for mothers, right? Thankful for our mothers. Um you know, we've all got stories we can complain about our moms, right? Even moms got stories they can complain about their mom. What's it good? Most moms are doing the best that they can. They're doing how they are only behaving in the way that they were trained, right? And then the, the their mother, same way. So let's just give them credit. Thank you. Seriously. And every day should be Mother's Day. Mothers generally, as a rule, are usually nicer than fathers. So like, let's be nice to them. I'm thankful for today, right? Again, I keep thinking about this. Uh, you know, uh, one of the thank yous is that that I'm alive. That's what that is. You know, I've got a whole list on the back here of people that that aren't alive anymore. Notable people. Over the weekend, Little Richard died. 
uh, Gerald Slater, who um, is one of the founding fathers of PBS. He died recently. Brian Howe, the original lead singer of the group Bad Company. Uh, the actor from Life of Pi and Slumdog Millionaire. Irfan Khan, maybe. Uh, sorry if I messed that up, but rest in peace. Hannah Storm's dad, Mike uh, Storin is his name. And Hannah Storm has been, Hannah Storm is amazing, right? She's been on ESPN forever. Uh, and she's a lot older than she looks. And she's always got a short dress on, people on her case. She's married to a famous sportcaster, and her father was a famous sportscaster. And I just saw that over the weekend and then saw her, you know, talk about him over the weekend. It's just, you know, it's hard. And then uh, the last one I want to talk about is Roy Horn. So Roy Horn, that's not his real name, but that's the guy from Siegfried and Roy, not Siegfried, obviously. He's the other one. He's the one that got bit by the tiger, right? And, uh, you know, so they had something on over the weekend. I'd actually seen it before. I think I talked about it. It was right after the Tiger King came on. It's a little segment about them. And there were a couple things about that that were just really stuck with me. Number one is that those guys grew up in post-World War II Germany, meaning there was nothing. And when I mean nothing, I mean nothing. And you hear Siegfried talk about it. There's economic restrictions. That I mean, the rest of the world, and rightfully so, dropped the hammer on uh, Germany after World War II. Like, teach them a lesson. And a lot that... I, 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 this is not the first time I've heard about it. A lot of the men just really, really struggled with it. And there was a big rise in alcoholism. Well, Siegfried talked about how, and Roy, in an interview, talked about how both their fathers were alcoholics. They never even spoke to their children, right? Just They were just in a, nu a nuisance to them. They were just there. And Siegfried swears the first time that his father ever actually acknowledged him was after he had found some money in the street, bought a music book. Uh, and learned how to do magic tricks. And when he did that, his dad was like, how'd you do that? And so anyway, and then Roy, uh, you know, they, they figured out the magic there, right? And Siegfried, again, said by himself, Siegfried would not be enough and Roy would be too much. Siegfried was the musician. Roy was the, the animal guy. And uh, then with Roy, it's just an example of we're not in control. We think we're in control, but we're really not in control. And uh, that fateful night in 2003, that tiger just had enough. And, uh, you know, they made up the story. He said I went cardiac arrest and he was trying to save me and this, that and the other. Who knows what happened? All you know is that, you know, that's part of the lure of people playing with tigers. Like at any moment, that tiger could just say, all right, I've had enough of you bossing me around and do exactly what happened. And that's what happened and changed everything forever. So what's my point? You know, there's several points in there. Number one is that there had to be sadness. Just, I mean, Post-World War II, Russia had to suck, right? And out of that came a whole bunch of beauty, right? And Siegfried and Roy are part of that. But just like everybody, every other, most other humans, they get to a certain level and it's never enough. They have to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And eventually we push it too hard and nature, animals, whatever reminds us, like, yeah, you're not in charge. Um, last thing, thank you for sports, right? I mean... I don't know about you guys, but I really miss sports now that they're not here. And then I think about all the lessons and it's kind of like I've uh, gotten past my addiction to sports because now I just do other things to keep me, um, keep my time preoccupied, but I still miss it. Anyway, that's it for the day. Hands up. Peace out. We're better together. I appreciate you stopping by on a Mamba Monday. I'm going to be over here, up here at BF, BFOK working hard. You do the same. I'll be back tomorrow on a two for Tuesday. We'll see you then. Deuces. Hashtag real talk. Team LeBron right here. F you COVID. Go away. We've had it with you. See ya.